Hello everyone, welcome to today's webinar, How to Use BI for Better Invoicing. My name is Stacy Jensen. I'm the Sales Manager for the Business Intelligence Division here at Help Systems. And joining me today is Mike Stegman. Mike is our Senior Data Access Consultant for the Business Intelligence Division. He has been with Help Systems for over 16 years and has worked on the IBMI since its inception in 1988. How are you today, Mike? I'm doing great. I'm glad to be here and excited to, about what we have to share today. Yes, me too. We have a special guest today. So earlier this week, Terry Nielsen from Meisner Manufacturing allowed us to interview him on how he's using SQL at Meisner Manufacturing. So we'll share that in just a few moments. Before we get started, though, a little housekeeping about today's session. If you have questions during the session, please use the questions feature and send a message to all panelists. We'll address those questions during our Q&A at the conclusion of the webinar. We are also recording the webinar and we will include a link to the recording in our follow-up email. So Mike and I have the privilege of working with our prospects and customers on a daily basis. We get to hear firsthand what the challenges are with data access, querying, reporting, and business intelligence. Very often, organizations share the same key items that they want to accomplish when implementing a business information solution. First is to improve their processes. What seems to always come up first is that business users want the data in Excel and they want to make this happen without resorting to multiple step processes, manual downloads, or rekeying information into Excel. We also hear that they want a way to easily schedule a report to run an email on a regular basis. And if the company is using Query 400, they share that they want to find a way where they do not have to create multiple queries and run them manually to get to a, an end result, a final result. Secondly, organizations want to be able to analyze key information so they can quickly evaluate their performance in such areas as sales, marketing, operations, inventory management, they want to provide business users with easy access and a fast interpretation of real-time accurate information. So they want to transform data into visualizations that help business users gain insight and understanding of what's happening within their department or the company. The end goal is that this will lead them to making better decisions. That's right. The, those are the things that we hear when we talk uh, and, and where SQL can really, really help when we talk with our customers and that's where SQL can really help. Business users, managers, they're asking for real time key information and they want it in a more modern visual way. IT sometimes struggles to, to not be the bottleneck for better reporting or to getting access to the data. We give the developers a tool that improves their turnaround time in building any informational requests, eliminating those bottlenecks. Our enterprise data access solution, SQL, makes developers and end users productive in building reports. We can format the data so the end users can understand it. No matter where your data is located, SQL Server, Oracle, MySQL, et cetera, we can help you access it. This helps build consolidated uh, multi-platform reporting as well. And as Stacy mentioned uh, earlier, we've had, we always have the opportunity to talk with a lot of customers, and we had an opportunity to talk with Mr. Terry Nielsen from Meisner. And we'd like to share that interview with you now. We are here today with Terry Nielsen, Credit and Collections Manager with Meisner Manufacturing. Terry is going to share with us how he has been using SQL to improve his processes and to access and analyze key sales and operational information. How are you today, Terry? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. So why don't we start off our conversation with you telling us a little bit about Meisner Manufacturing and what your role is at Meisner. We've, uh, we've been in business here in the pool and spa industry for more than 50 years. Um, during that time, we've grown from a small filter bag manufacturer to an industry-leading mid-sized filter element manufacturer with the most extensive product line in the industry. 
I've worked here at Meisner for more than 22 years as a credit and collections manager. I manage the entire AR portfolio, working closely with all departments to ensure the quick turnaround of our receivables asset. Often, though, I'm in tasks with finding reporting solutions to aid in such areas as seal support and streamlining the AR process. Although using products like Excel does help to save some time, they can still be quite manual in their application. Mm. Yeah, so true. Excel is powerful and the tool of choice for business users, as you said, um, there can be some challenges sometimes. So you mentioned that you are tasked with finding a way to report information for different areas of the business. But for SQL, how did you handle that? Was it primarily Excel? Well, in the past, uh, we used uh, a software on, on the iSeries that was a very report printing based uh, software. And we, it, so we relied heavily on Excel. Unfortunately, this meant printing a hard copy of information from the I-series and manually entering the information into a spreadsheet before we can even begin to create reports um, that would help us in our business. Of course, we could also load data you know, into Excel, um, and, and that saved a little bit of time, to be sure. 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 So what were the challenges that led you to consider finding a new solution to handle your reporting needs? Well, as time went on, um, we, we found this process of manually entering data into Excel or even exporting, uh, excuse me, importing data into a CSV file was a cumbersome process that we wanted to change. All the data we received was quite limited in the fact that it was only useful for one specific point in time. We preferred to perform our reporting of data on the fly in real time. And this process really didn't afford us that luxury. And so that's where SQL came in. How did you hear about SQL? Well, eventually, we outgrew the software on the iSeries that we were using and started looking for a new package to run our business. After looking at many packages, we settled on the Harris Data Solution. We reviewed many amazing packages that could seemingly do it all. Unfortunately, the costs for those extensive packages were quite prohibitive for our size and needs. As um, after the conversion, and taking some time to get used to the new software, we found we were still using Excel more than we wanted to. Excel is pretty versatile uh, and a useful tool to be sure. However, we still wanted something to report on real-time activity. And we attended the Harris Data User Conference. Um, at that conference, we attended a session on SQL Viewpoint. By the time the session concluded, we were certain that SQL Viewpoint was a solution that we needed to enhance our, and improve our reporting. Hmm. So you decided to trial SQL. Can you tell us how that process went for you? It was very easy. Obtaining, installing, and starting out on Viewpoint was seamless, it seemed. The staff at Help Systems worked so closely with us uh, and the setup with the iSeries environment. They kept in contact with us and made sure that any questions we might have were answered quickly. The entire process from purchase to use was quick and painless. Mm -hmm. So once that software was up and running, what was the first thing that you did? Well, as I learned after we had set it up and before I dove into it, um, Help Systems did have a, a getting familiar session available that, that I didn't take advantage of, and, and I probably should have. But since I'd seen what SQL could do firsthand, uh, I, I dove right in. I started working on views. Um, and tables, uh, even though I, I don't have a, pro, a programming or IT background. So I, I just wanted to get to know the commands, you know, and learn how to use joins and try to locate the correct database tables in Harris Data that had the information we'd be using. My first views were many different sales report formats. They ranged from individual customer query type views to categorized group views. In our business, we have several independent distributors that might comprise a buying group. So creating a view to query sales by dollar volume as well as by individual item was something we never had access to in the past. It was an immediate benefit um, that allowed us to better focus our strategy and sales effort with a more fine-tuned approach. We were able to pinpoint slow-moving SKUs within any customer or buying group and take steps to improve our sales efforts. It was so helpful comparing year-over-year -year data to see where we needed to focus our efforts. And that was something you were able to accomplish right away during that evaluation. It was very quick. And we moved right into it. That's great. 
So have you had the chance to work with our tech support team? I sure did. Um, I've probably worked with all of them. Um, and, and, and mostly my contact has been with Rich Galema. Can't tell you how much, how often he's helped me out of a bind. Uh, I learned a lot from Rich and he helped educate me on the use of viewpoint. You're right. You didn't take advantage of that getting started session, but you figured out how to get in and get the information that you needed, either um, just by figuring it out on your own or by working with tech support. Um, is there anything else that you found that SQL has helped you with? Yeah, um, I've used SQL to maintain our receivable portfolio. I've created agings, statements, credit reference query routines that help put the correct information on my screen, screen when responding to other businesses. Lists to show where debits should be applied to credits to clean up account detail and order and invoice and uh, query routines. When all I have was a PO number or an order number, I can enter it in a view to call up a transaction related to that number. So that was a runtime prompt of view that you set up? Yes. Yes, it was a runtime view, and, um, and and the statements, of course, were statements that were generated without any human intervention. We actually just put them um, in, in the system, and, and they generate once a month, every single month, without anyone doing anything. It's, it's a big time saver. So when you look back at how you've used SQL at Meisner, can you tell us what it's provided in terms of productivity gains or process improvements? I really cannot put a definitive number of hours I've saved using SQL, but it's substantial. The time it now takes me to access data is seconds compared to several minutes in the past. On an annual basis, easily, uh, I save hundreds of hours with SQL. Once the view or report is created, I can access the data real time. I have access immediately to the information, so I can respond uh, immediately to any situation. With Rich Galeva's help, we created customer statements, as I mentioned earlier, that automatically run on the last day of each month. There's literally no human input to run or send statements to each customer via email each month. Uh, many times, I receive calls from customers with questions on their statements or requesting perhaps you know, an invoice they never received. It really has been very positive for us. Hmm. So you've been able to look at real-time information. You shared the example of being able to pull and share sales information, which helped you determine where to focus those sales efforts. And you have also set up a process to automatically get monthly statements out to customers. That sounds like it has increased that customer engagement for you. Indeed it has. It's, it's, it's been a great big benefit for us in many ways. Great. And what are your plans for SQL in the future? SQL gives me the ability to query any table in our database. The more familiar I become with our table structure, the better I can access the data. In the future, I plan to use SQL to help with purchasing, accounts payable, and improve efficiencies here at Meisner. No matter how big we grow, SQL will help us keep our efficiencies sharp and cost down. The software will easily pay for itself in time. That's great, Terry. Thanks so much for sharing that information today. Um, we just really appreciate it, I think. But um, most importantly, we thank you for being a valued customer. Oh, well, thanks very much. It's been a pleasure. Thanks. Have a great day. Thank you, you too. Well, that was a good conversation with Terry on how he has utilized SQL. It was good to hear that he's still on his journey of improving reporting for the different departments at Meisner Manufacturing. Mike, exactly. I think you're going to summarize for us, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm doing a quick little summary here of uh, some of the things how SQL has helped. Uh, SQL's helped improve his process, right? Getting data into Excel where they still like it to get. He's able to automate the monthly billing statements. And I happened to see them. They were really cool PDFs. The only change I would uh, maybe suggest to him was put some overlays on it, right? Put the company logo somewhere on there or something like that. And, but now they go out without any human intervention, right? It could still pick up those those um, images uh, and put them out there. Now they're able to access, that was one of the key things too, is they're able to access and analyze the, the sales information, which 
has helped their sales and marketing strategies, you know, to easily get at the information, to see their year over year information he was talking about. All of that is really cool. And lastly, just being able to access that real time information. That's the key to accelerate that business decision making and help in uh, problem solving for later on. So that's kind of key too. a lot of uh, customers use SQL for those problem solvings. You know, show me a purchase order that's been open too long or show me a, an invoice that hasn't been paid or he was talking about accounts receivable and seeing, you know, things that can be applied to keep that file a little bit smaller. So that's really yeah. cool. Great. Yeah. So thanks for summarizing that, Mike. Um, I think we're ready to move into our live demo. So we'll transition over to that. Sounds good. Yeah, and, and what we'll see here is uh, we'll see how we can create some results, right, within SQL and show some of the flexibility in distributing the information, some of the, the ways that you can go about it. Plus, one of the things that Terry hasn't actually gotten into yet from his uh, from the interview there is dashboards. So I'll spend a little bit of time talking about creating a dashboard and doing some of that. And then throughout the whole thing, hopefully everyone will pick up some uh, little bit of extra things. So I'm going to just... Uh, Flip over here. Give me just a second. Okay. This is SQL Viewpoint, what you're seeing here. And I'm going into design. And we do have a view builder that you can use, which is kind of like a procedural way to go into. You can go to the SQL tab if you need to copy and paste some stuff. I like using the files and fields tab. I have set up my favorites list that gives me just five files. That way I don't have to have a whole list of files. I can still get to other files if I need to. So let's start off with just three. Okay, using my control key. Now, Viewpoint has an auto join feature, so I've told SQL how to link these together. My, my defaults within SQL always say to use an inner join, but I can change that if I need to. So now my, my joins are already made and I'm all ready to start selecting the fields. So it doesn't matter the order, but I'm just going to pick them out of the files here. Order number, line number, uh, product number here. Now, I also want to grab the product description, but I don't have it here, so I'm going to go and add another database file. Not, you know, you could do these one at a time. I like grabbing multiples. I just missed that one, so no problem. No harm, no foul, as they say, right? Grab some uh, numeric fields here. And I'm going to create a derived field. This is where the power of SQL really starts to show. You can do conditional logic to convert fields. You can do a lot of different things. This one's going to be a really simple quantity ordered times the actual selling price to get the extended price for the uh, for the orders but you can really get powerful here you can you know like conditional logic is really the a really big one but uh, converting fields uh, character to numeric, numeric to character converting to dates um, a lot of that can be quite powerful okay i'm going to make it uh, pleasant for the user as i call it giving them a column heading so they kind of know how to do it and sorting it's got to be the easiest one right just one two three uh, user can change the sort on the display but i'm just going to set it up for them and then the filtering you want to filter your records you want to get all the records out there right so i want to start with my state because that's kind of the easiest one to do and if you're going to hard code it, character field needs to be in quotes, real simple. I want the user to be able to select their state. So I'm going to make it a variable. That's simple. I ampersand in front of the word makes it a variable. Okay. We made it for you because the field and the, and the variable name are the same. So now if I hit display, it's going to prompt me for the state value, which I could enter in. But I'm going to add some extra power and flexibility into the tool where you can come over to the variables tab and add some other testing. You can do things like a values list where you can enter some values for them to go into, but states are kind of a lot, right? I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go back to the original file or it could be any file and go into it. Again, I'm doing it all from clicking. I haven't really typed much except the alternate name and column headings, right? And I'm picking the customer master file and the state field. So just like that, I've started out from scratch. I have four files brought in, several fields. I have a prompted view. <clears throat> I have all my states. We do a select distinct to get one entry for each state. Here's Texas. And now these are all my customers with orders here in Texas. And their sort order is fine. They're all ready to go. You can see my extended price field. Yeah, I could have tweaked that a little bit to not have three decimal places, but <laughs> you know. 
kind of doing it for speed here. So now I want to save the definition. So I'm going to put it into a library out on the eye. The minute I save it, it's ready to run either from green screen, from our, our GUI tool here, viewpoint, or from the browser just by saving this definition. Okay, so anybody who has access to that library I saved it in can go ahead and run it. Now from the viewpoint here, refresh my screen. There's the one I just created here. It's called sample. I can right click on it and display it in Excel. I can send it as an, save it as a PC file just on my local network. I can email it, right? Not good to email something that's prompted unless I'm doing it just one off like this, right? But I can do it easily done. But the reason I said you might want might not want to do it on a email thing is because you fill out your two and your CC and your BCC, you pick your PC format. But what you can also do from here, and this is where the prompting is, is eh, it's okay, but scheduling, right? How do I want this schedule? So I can put it out here. Of course, now it's going to send it to whatever state I selected and whoever it's going to, it's always going to be on the job scheduler. If you don't have robot scheduler, no problem. We use the IBM I job scheduler and you can schedule it right from here. So the jobs, again, human intervention, starts to disappear, it's safe, it's all ready to go. Now let's get into dashboards. Now when you start a dashboard, you get um, nothing here, right? You get absolutely nothing on the screen. And I do have like the snap to grid here. I see these little dots. Now I'm ready to start, start insert a thing. Again, it doesn't matter the order. I like putting a text out there, you know, just to have something on my dashboard, right? Just put something out there. Now I'm going to modify, you can modify the text, the background color. I'm going to change the font size here. I like to make it bigger. And I remove the border and position it wherever I'd like. It can be moved at any time during design. Now I'm going to insert a SQL object. Okay, let's go out and grab that one we just created. It's in a different library here. It's called Business Intel. And it was called Sample V1. Okay, so here it is. There's my prompt, <clears throat> pick a state, and that's gonna ask me an important question. Do you wanna save that value, California, with the dashboard? No, I do not. I want the user to be prompted every time, so I answer no. There's my results for California, and I size and position the window as I see fit, okay? Again, any size, any position. I'm gonna do another one here. I'm gonna insert one that we've already built, in my um, demo library, just our little um, accounts receivable view called AR. And there's AR, okay, it has my data. This one also has some conditional colors, some, some static colors for the columns, um, like I said, conditional highlighting on the weighted average if it's over 100. Now I'm gonna create a graph over the total AR. So you highlight it and you click the graph button at the top. I'm gonna pick two columns here right, and hit the graph button. What does that give me? Well, as you can see in the chart, make this a little bigger, there we go. As you can see, we have over 90 days and total AR, right? This is where Terry was talking about the year over year would be really good, right? So you can flip that around too, as I have total 90 days and total AR, if I change my order, now I have it by region at the bottom and the different colors. So it's good for looking at sales and revenues or, or revenue versus cost or, or just sales amounts year over year. So you can have, you know, 2017, 2018, 2019, et cetera. You can have all that data. You go to the toolbar. You can start tweaking this even more, right? Pick a line chart. And eh, this data doesn't work real well with lines. So I'm going to go to a two-dimensional bar. I kind of like that. I can change a lot of different things here. Titles. I don't want to have a comparison by sales region. It doesn't really tell me a whole lot. So I'm going to change it. Type in uh, AR. Now, what am I looking at here again, right? Over 90. and total AR. So if it was a year over year, might be called, uh, you know, sales versus cost year over year or sales just simply by itself year over year. So you build it based on the view that you have there. You can move the position of the legend. You can make other changes. I like to remove that toolbar. Otherwise, it'll, it'll appear when the user runs this. You can also um, hide the toolbar totally. Let me change. I want to make one change here. I do want it to stay to the uh, row order here. Okay, now if you don't want the user to see the toolbar, you have an option to hide the toolbar. It goes away. 
And you can also hide the border. I kind of like hiding the border at runtime for charts and, and uh, not so much for the data, but that's me. I just like doing that. I'm going to insert something else. I want to insert a gauge. I'm going to use the same data that's displayed. We have different options, dials, thermometer type, readouts, custom images. Okay, I'm going to use a custom, uh, or I mean a digital panel here. You do need to have the data displayed so that you can do that. I highlighted the data and it filled in the wizard screen for me. Now little tweaks here to the to the digital readout. Custom mask, going to make it uh, zero, no dollars. I make the transparency full. You can change the colors. Some customers might not like that green. They might want it black, right? You can do that. Then again, size and position everything. Now I don't even have to have the data on here, so I'm gonna hide it. Data goes away. Can't close it down because I need it to run the chart and the gauge, right? Now again, I can position. And being the way I am, I like to insert text boxes on top of my gauges that would say what it is we're looking at, right? So AR total, because remember that was the column that I picked, the AR total column for that. Again, you can change the font style, the size, that kind of thing, the border, position it to where you need to. So this is where you're kind of getting creative, right? You've already built the views. You already have the powerful views out there. Now you're having the, uh, using the, what the user might want to see or what the user does want to see. So now I'm creating an action button, right? It's something the user can just click on labeling it sales report, change the color, assigning an object to that. I'm gonna go on, assign a sales report. Let's see, it's called sales uh, detail information, having it display right in the window. It pops up there as my action. Go ahead and click okay. And now I have that button. Size and position that as well, right? I can copy it, I can move it around. Right, I copy, and then if you paste, just makes a copy of it. Okay, then I don't want it to run another one, so I'm gonna go in and edit it, right? So this one's not gonna be the sales report. This one's going to be the customer order information. Yeah, I got what you type is what you get, so let's fix that. <laughs> All right. Again, the button color is the same. I do have to change this equal object, right? Because I copied it, so it had the original. I'm going to go down to the or customer orders. It's called uh, Custlist. Custlist P. Go ahead and select that. Again, displaying it in a new window. Go ahead and click OK to accept that. Now I have two buttons, right? You can go on and on. Some customers make menus where there's just one dashboard, nothing but buttons. Right now, here's a little trick I like to do is I'm going to create a text box with just an A in it, but the text and the background color are going to be the same, not showing the border. So what is that going to do for me? Well, what I'm going to use it is like a mat, right? So I resize it, cover, put it over my buttons, and then say send it to the back. So now it appears my buttons are sitting on a mat, right? Kind of a little placeholder. And it's kind of cool to do. You can do that with gauges. You can do that with buttons. Kind of works pretty well with that. Real easy to do, too. But it makes it a little bit easier. So um, now when we go to save it, you want to save it as a system I object. You don't have to, but it's recommended because you can always make a shortcut from it on the user's desktop. So I'm going to go to my library and I'm going to call it sample. Probably not a good name for it, right? I want to call it something more what it is, but this is just a sample or a demo. So I'm just going to, to call it that. Call it what it is, right? Description, I got 120 characters. I can type a whole big old long description and that's what the user can look at primarily. And then you can see that. So now I've saved my dashboard. So if I go look at my existing tab, refresh my business intelligence, there's my view that I created and my sample dashboard. I can run it right from here with a double click, or I can go to my browser. Okay, this is our SQL Web Interface Explorer, and I'm gonna put in the library business intel and refresh it. There's not a lot in here, so I can see what I wanna run. And I go down to my sample dash, double click on it from here, and it opens it up. Now I could also have this as a shortcut for the user, right? There's my prompt. Remember I said, don't save the value? So now the user gets to choose the prompt as they see fit. <clears throat> okay, there's my data. I picked Illinois. 
I could save the results to a PC file right here from the browser. So the advantage of having the, the user running it from a browser is there's zero footprint, right? They just access the link that you give it, whether it's directly to the dashboard or to the Explorer like I'm using here. They can print, they can add their own subtotals, create their own charts on a fly. They, there's a reprompt button if there's a prompted uh, view on there. So it's real powerful for them. Take a quick look at a couple of other dashboards that I've created. This one, these are in uh, my demo library. This one here has just a lot of different information. It's got some gauges on the left. It's got two different types of graphs, a pie. It's got some buttons. If the data is showing, if it's an application or, or a grouped view with dynamic drill down, that's all still functioning. If the chart or graph is built and you are showing the toolbar, you can drill down from a chart. So you have the, the ability for that. This I mentioned some of our customers do menus. So this is what a menu might look like, right? It's really up to you on how you want to build it. And of course, you can have something like this, which would be like a KPI dashboard. I got a lot of gauges at the bottom, some graphs, right? Some buttons, see my little map there, and allows me to, to build it. So a lot of different things that you can do with the uh, dashboard for your presentation. And that wraps okay. up our demo. A good, yeah, that was a, a nice uh, quick demo. Good overview. Appreciate that. I think uh, we're going to move on to answering your questions. Before we do, we have one quick question for you. If you wouldn't mind taking a second and letting us know if you would like to see more of SQL, maybe a one on one demo. So we'll just uh, give you a couple of seconds there to answer that quick polling question for us. Yeah, it's a quick little polling question. We uh, didn't tell you there was going to be homework, right? <laughs> you have to click on a button. <laughs> oh, wow, i got to click. Reminds me of the Jetsons, right? George Jetson's job was to push a button, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm uh, dating myself now here. Uh, but uh, like you said, I've been working with the system since uh, the system, 1988. And then, you know, the other uh, things before that. So, <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I always kind of reluctant to say that, you know, it kind of gives away the age, right? <laughs> gives away your age. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, some oh. of the younger people will look at you like, what are you talking about? Yeah, <laughs> now, the Jetsons exactly. are fairly well known, so that shouldn't be too much of an issue. But, yeah, sometimes you get those uh, older movies or older TV shows, things like that. So. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thanks for um, answering that. We appreciate that. So we'll move on to the questions. Um, and I did see one come in here, Mike, when you were demoing. And it was, um, I have data on an SQL server. Can SQL access that information? Yeah, yeah. We um, kind of mentioned that somewhere along the way here. Somebody came in before that. But yeah, we provide the drivers for you to do that, right? So you can you can build your SQL objects over data on those other drivers. I mean, on those other systems using the drivers. Easy, relatively easy setup, one time by the administrator, set it up, then whoever's building the views just points to that database and uses the same files and fields tab or the SQL tab or the view builder and kind of goes through and um, builds your view that way, right? So they can build the definition and but accessing the data on your SQL server. So yeah, uh, since the question came in, I'm assuming it might be already a customer. So, you know, uh, reach out to support and, and they'll help you with the connection if you need assistance on that. Yeah, good, thanks. Mm -hmm. So you you showed um, creating and deploying dashboard. Somebody just wants to verify that you don't need anything extra, it, that it comes, that that ability comes with SQL. They don't have to buy any add-on modules oh, sure. or anything. Correct, correct. That is correct. It's all part of the system. Viewpoint is included with SQL, and Viewpoint allows you easily to create the SQL objects, including dashboards that can be displayed from the SQL web interface. Um, so if you have that piece, you just point your users to the browser, they run it from there. And like you saw, there's some interactivity depending on the type of dashboard that you're running or the type of data that's being displayed. So you know, that's where the flexibility of the distribution really comes in, too. And like I said, Terry's interview, he, uh, he's he been a customer for a little while, but they haven't gotten quite to that point yet where they're really using the, the dashboards. But that may be next for him. So <laughs> That's right. 
as we said, he's on a journey to continue to make improvements on data access and reporting. So exactly, uh, you are right. I'm sure he will head down that path. <laughs> so I think that was all of our questions. That's um, all I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that wraps up our webinar for today. Um, thank you to Terry. Um, and Mike for sharing with us today. Thanks everyone for joining us. We really appreciate it and we hope you have a great day. Thanks everyone.